This is part two of purchasing an enterprise manager. In the previous video, we reviewed how to examine and work with items which have been ordered. In this video, we will cover how to place orders. Purchases in enterprise manager begin life as requests for goods. Some users will be able to request items without being able to send off a purchase order. A new request can be created by clicking on the new goods requests button in the upper left hand corner of the purchase orders module. This opens the Purchase Order Item Editor. There are many required fields, which are shown in red. First, we must select the location we are purchasing for. Next, if we have a particular date by which we need this item to be here, we can enter that. If we know exactly how long the item will take to arrive, we can enter the number of days here. However, we can also leave it blank to allow the system to auto-calculate. If we know our job number, we can type it in. Otherwise, we can click the Lookup button to find it. If we know our vendor code, we can type that in. Otherwise, we can press the Lookup button to find it. The Lookup window for vendors has a favorites list available, which can be added to and subtracted from. If we wish to, we can select an item out of our SKU catalog which will pre-populate the vendor description, the item number, which it will allow, give us a list of vendors to select from, and Purchasing. can supply us average costing information, on order information, when an item was last received. However, we don't have to select from that catalog we can simply enter an item by description. We enter our quantity and in this field we can enter math if we need to. We select our unit of measure. Here we specify whether we're going to tell the system the actual cost to place on the purchase order or simply an estimate of the cost. At Architectural Arts we require one of the two to be specified in order to meet our accounting requirements. Here we can enter an item number. This is the vendor's item number. We did not have this field in previous in QuickBooks. So if the vendor had an item number such as 282.25.75, we put it here. It makes it quicker for them to enter it on their end. But the field is not required. Here we can enter a plain English description of the item we're ordering. You can see this drop down is offering me a suggestion of job properties. These are things that have been defined for the job. So in this case, I can type 4 by 8, and as I begin to type something which matches the list of job properties, it'll begin to narrow down. The display field shows us how it's going to show up on the purchase order. So even though I've entered 4 by 8 PL2, the purchase order is going to show what PL2 actually stands for. Internal description is simply for our own use. It will be displayed to the receiver, but will not show on the purchase order. I can check the notify me on goods receipts for this item box if I want to receive an email and hot note anytime this item is received. The materials GL account is not a required field. There are a lot of things that will go into the system calculating the default. This is a list of other items that are already on request from this vendor. And the suspend request checkbox will prevent anybody from ordering this item until it is unsuspended. If I'm ready to add another item, I can simply click Save and New. I can make whatever changes are necessary. The job ID, vendor code, and quantity were left pre-populated with the previous values. Because often, you'll find yourself entering the same items over and over, or in a series for the same job. In this case, we're going to go ahead and change the job. And you'll see a different list of job properties is available. Again, we can type math into this field. I can also click the Calculate button, which will offer me a quick way to determine a final price given discounts for multiple price breaks. When I'm done entering orders, I can simply hit Save instead of Save and New, or if I've already hit Save and New, I can simply close the window. 
the list of requested items is accessed from this button under the Actions area. You'll see that's grouped by facility. I can also filter by facility to only see Des Moines. These items indicate that they're already past their must send date. If I click on them, we can see that I've told it that I need it by 421 and it's calculated from the vendor's average lead time that we must order by a date that we've already passed. Again, it still indicates that my new need by date is un unobtainable. So I'll kick that out just a little further into the future just to demonstrate what it looks like. So now we're no longer past it, but we are approaching the must send by date. In this way, you can put requests for items in, tell the system when you need them, and our purchasing manager can make sure that we get the items when they're needed. When we're ready to issue a purchase order, we'll simply right click on the vendor and select the issue PO item. This opens up the purchase order editor where we can specify where the item is shipping to, how we're going to transmit, which I'm not going to, but transmitting by fax will send a fax from the server, transmitting by email will send an email from the server, not your local station. Payment method and shipping method are available, however, they're set to the vendor's defaults. We can change the vendor's instructions. Here we have two lists, one list of items that we're simply going to leave requested and one that we're going to add to the purchase order. I can move them by using the arrows. and You can see here it's giving me an estimate of what the purchase order is worth. If we know what the freight, crating, tax, and other charges should be, we can key them in. However, if we don't know, we simply leave them blank. And when we're prepared to send our purchase order, we hit issue. Because I've selected not to transmit the item, it's giving me a warning that I'm going to be responsible for making sure the vendor actually gets this. It's offering to print it for me, and we're simply going to view it on the screen, but we could export it to a PDF or email it from our local computer, which would open up Outlook. We could select a printer from the list, and if we had ever printed to a printer previously, it would also be listed as available. We're going to view it, and this is what our purchase order looks like. After issuing the purchase order, that purchase order is opened in a window for me to look at. And now there are no items on request for Des Moines. If I load one of the jobs that I just ordered for, we'll now see under Des Moines there is a purchase order for six sheets. That purchase order has more than these six sheets on it. It had another line item for another job. But because I searched by this job, I'm able to see only the items ordered for this job. And the color coding is indicating that nothing whatsoever has happened with this. Because I've placed an order, my home screen now has an action item telling me that we've not received a confirmation. It's asking me to contact the vendor or wait for the vendor to send a confirmation using its normal process and then enter whatever they tell us in terms of when we're going to receive our items. This is a step which will normally be conducted by our purchasing manager. But if I click on it, it'll pull up the purchase order for me, and I can right click on the purchase order and enter my confirmation. Here I have a list of the items. I can select them one by one, or I can multiple select them. In this case, we're going to indicate that we're going to receive these on two different dates. So this item, I will indicate, is going to be received here. And this item, purely to demonstrate what happens when an item becomes overdue, I will indicate should be received yesterday, even though that's nonsensical. You'll see now I have a new action item. There's no longer any purchase orders of mine 
that require confirmation. However, this one is overdue because the date that I told it has come and gone without a receipt having occurred. So the next step here would be to contact the vendor and find out what the new corrected date is. And we'll indicate it's this. And because I have no actions left that need my attention, I have nothing on my list.